Well, good day everybody, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. So sorry it's been a while since my last video. Things have been pretty busy. So what I wanted to do today is briefly talk about carbon monoxide toxicity. Since the wonderful holiday seasons are upon us, it's getting colder in most places, people are using their stoves, fires, etc. Carbon monoxide toxicity is certainly more of a concern this time of the year at least in this hemisphere than other times of the year and I figure what the heck let's talk about the chemistry of carbon monoxide toxicity and why carbon monoxide is such an unreasonably good ligand compared to oxygen that is to say that carbon monoxide has about 200 250 times the affinity for binding to a uh, hemoglobin than oxygen that seems kind of weird what's going on there well What's going on there is going to require us to revisit molecular orbital theory, crystal field theory, ligand field theory, and all that good chemistry stuff um, that I've done videos on. So if you want, go ahead and refresh yourselves on uh, crystal field theory, um, on uh, molecular orbital theory, and uh, uh, chemistry in general if you want uh, from my past videos, and then come back and uh, watch the rest of this video. And hopefully we can make some sense of this really interesting concept that's going on involving something known as pi back All righty, here we go. So let's just build up uh, our basic uh, intuition behind what's going on. So here I have a crystal field splitting diagram and I have the electronic uh, configuration for iron. So this is the iron atom, um, the naked, uh, naked unchanged atom. Um, argon forms the electron configuration of the noble gas. Argon forms the core electrons aren't involved in chemical bonding, 3D6, 4S2. All right, so uh, let's talk about the iron in its plus two oxidation state, which is how it's found in uh, the, the porphyrin ring of a hemoglobin molecule. Um, so you've lost two electrons, so the four S2 electrons have been ionized, you're left with 3D6. Okay, here is a generic crystal field splitting diagram. I've got my T2G orbitals down here, okay, my DXY, my DYZ, my uh, my DXZ, excuse me, my DYZ, and then I have my EG orbitals, the DZ squared, the DX squared minus the DY squared. These are orbitals that are aligned directly along the X, Y, or Z axes. And then these orbitals here, these D orbitals here are aligned in between the X, Y, and Z axes, and that's going to be important. Um, I just happened to populate the el six electrons okay in a high spin situation so this is a high spin um, situation or a, a weak field um, but these uh, I could just as easily do a low spin or a strong field where as these electrons would be paired up down here in these three orbitals and then these orbitals would be open um, either way this is just kind of a generic setup to refresh you okay so let's talk about what the traditional dative bonding uh, between carbon monoxide and um, oxygen or uh, and the iron would predict it would predict a situation like this okay so i have a situation where i have an eg orbital um, specifically the dx squared minus dy squared okay this guy up here okay and remember the eg orbitals are aligned directly along the axes so here i have um, the dx squared minus y squared, okay, I have uh, probability density aligned along uh, directly in line with the x and y axes and then the z axis, imagine, popping out at you, okay? And so what I have is I have a lone pair of electrons on my carbon atom, okay, my carbon monoxide, and this could be any other kind of ligand, right? And in general, we say that ligands donate pairs of electrons to a positively charged metal and so you'd have a pair of electrons on the carbon atom okay and the pair of electrons would be in a sigma right a sigma molecular orbital because sigma orbitals are orbitals that are aligned along the x the y or the z axis aligned directly along that and so you have this direct bonding of probability density you get this direct overlap um, and so you should have a lone pair of electrons, okay, in a um, sigma orbital that is in phase with the dx squared minus dy squared orbital, uh, d orbital of the metal, and you get this sigma, kind of this sigma bonding character to it. 
and there you go. You have your, your, your um, traditional date of bonding. Um, this is more or less what you see with oxygen bonding to the iron and hemoglobin, right? Well, if that's what we more or less see with oxygen, and this is what we're, we're predicting with carbon monoxide, why is carbon monoxide, why is affinity so much higher? What's going on there? Well, let's go ahead and vi revisit some molecular orbital theory. So, let's take the electronic configuration for carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Um, the electron configuration for oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So here I have my uh, carbon atom and the valence electrons in the atomic orbitals. I've got my oxygen atom here, my valence electrons in my atomic orbitals. You can see oxygen has a larger atomic number. Z is larger, so the, the S and P orbitals are going to be a slightly lower energy than the S and P orbital in carbon because carbon has a... A, a smaller Z, right? The, the effective nuclear charge is going to be smaller in carbon than oxygen. All right, so I populate my valence electrons. I've got two uh, electrons in, in the 2s. They're right there. I've got two electrons in my p orbitals up here. I go to my oxygen. I've got the same uh, two electrons in the s. I've got four electrons in my p orbitals. And then we will go ahead and bring carbon and oxygen together and we will create our molecular orbitals here. The green are my S molecular orbitals, red are my P, and let me go ahead and just grab a marker here and let's just go ahead and populate these. Uh, so how many electrons do we have? We have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten total electrons to account for. We'll do the old Aufbau filling up, so we'll put a pair of electrons here in my sigma bonding orbital. All right, and I'll put another pair of electrons here in a sigma bonding orbital. I can get one sigma from my p orbitals, right? And then the rest of my bonds are gonna be pi, right? Sigma is in line with the axis, pi is in between the x, y, or z axes. All right, so I will go ahead and populate my pi orbital. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That leaves me with two electrons remaining and unfortunately they're just going to have to go up here in the higher energy pi star anytime you see a star that is an anti-bonding orbital so um, we know that the molecular structure of carbon monoxide is a carbon with a triple covalent bond to oxygen does molecular orbital theory predict that well let's go ahead and calculate the uh, bonding order the bonding order is um, bonding electrons um, that is electrons in bonding molecular orbitals less anti-bonding electrons divided by two. All right, so how many bonding electrons do I have? I've got two, four, six, eight. I have eight electrons in bonding orbitals. My two sigmas, two pi's. All right, so eight electrons in bonding. I have two electrons in an anti-bonding orbital here, my sigma star. Eight less two, divide that by two. Six divided by two, that gives me three. My bonding order is three. So molecular orbital theory predicts three covalent bonds. A uh, triple covalent bond is what I see with the carbon monoxide molecule. So far, so good, right? So um, let's just go ahead and solidify this. Uh, furthermore, do I have a situation where I can get a lone pair of electrons in a carbon atom that can be donated um, in a sigma type fashion? I sure do, right? I have got these pair of electrons up here all by their lonesome in an anti-bonding orbital, the sigma star. So I do have a pair of electrons on the uh, carbon atom here in what we call the HOMO, right? The highest occupied molecular orbital, okay? Which happens to be the sigma star anti-bonding orbital here. So I do have a pair of electrons in my HOMO that can be donated um, to the iron, or the, the metal ion, and so far so good, right? Everything seems to be adding up, except for the fact that there is this really really significantly high affinity, much higher affinity for carbon monoxide than oxygen, okay? So is there something else going on here with carbon monoxide? Well, in fact there is, and what I want to do is instead what I want to do is I want to look at the LUMO, okay? The, these guys down here, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals. So my lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals are my pi star. Okay, and here's the interesting thing. I do not have electrons here, right? So it's not like this can donate electrons to the metal. And remember, that's 
what traditionally a ligand is considered, right? And carbon monoxide is a ligand, right? Carbon monoxide, ammonia, water, what have you. Typically, we say that ligands donate pairs of electrons. Well, I don't have a pair of electrons to donate in my pi star, in my antibonding orbital, in my LUMO. But is there something interesting that can happen here? Well, the LUMO has this pi character to it, right? Okay, it is able, it has electron density or probability, potential probability density in between the x, y, and z axes. Do I have a situation like that in my d orbitals? Well, I don't have a situation like that in my eg d orbitals, the dz squared, the dx squared minus the y squared, but I most certainly have a situation like that in my T2G orbitals. Specifically, what I want you guys to pay attention to is the DXY orbital. That DXY orbital actually has a pair of electrons. Hmm, well, let's move over here. So what I have is my DXY, right? I have a pair of electrons in that DXY orbital. And here is my, again, my x-axis, my y-axis, and then the z-axis coming out. And so I have probability density aligned in between the x and y axes, right? And so I have peak, a lobe coming off at an angle here and a lobe coming off at an angle here in different phase. Well, if I go back here, okay, to the LUMO in my carbon monoxide molecule, I have this here nice and open area here on my carbon, okay, which is in the same phase. It has a pi character, and it can overlap with this orbital. And here's the really weird thing. The pair of electrons is actually in the iron, right? In the dxy orbital, if we go back here, the pair of electrons right here. So what happens is the iron here is actually through able to, instead of the ligand donating electrons to the metal, the metal is able to donate electrons into the, the carbon, okay, into the pi star anti-bonding orbital, okay, it, and so what happens is the metal is actually the one that's providing the pair of electrons, and, and instead of the ligand donating, it is the metal, quote unquote, donating, and we call that back bonding. So what does that do if we have back bonding? Well, because um, this is a pi star, this is an anti-bonding orbital as far as carbon monoxide is concerned, this will, is in essence, weaken the uh, carbon monoxide chemical bond, okay? Um, you're going to have um, a strengthening, a very strong uh, carbon monoxide to iron bond, okay, which is actually what we see. We see very high affinity, very strong bond. And we see that electrons are donated, quote unquote, from the iron um, into the carbon monoxide. And so what that produces is that produces a very interesting um, uh, polarity, if you will, of your carbon monoxide. You actually have, even though oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, and just based on electronegativity alone, you'd expect the oxygen to have more electron probability density, but because of this pi star anti-bonding orbital being able to accept a pair of electrons um, from my metal, I actually get more electron density around the carbon, and I have this, this uh, formal, this negative formal charge on the carbon, Okay, and so I have a, a delta negative on the carbon, a delta positive on the oxygen, and that goes into this kind of this weakening of the, the carbon monoxide bond overall. So I, I, can actually, um, I can actually test and see that the carbon monoxide uh, ligand has this, 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 this polar nature to it, okay? And this is what um, can help explain the fact that carbon monoxide has a much higher affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen because carbon monoxide as a ligand in this situation is acting very differently than oxygen, okay? It is not, it is not bonding in, this, in, this, in the characteristic dative fashion that we're used to in our, um, in our, our complex uh, chemistry, our coordination chemistry, but rather it is this pi back bonding concept that is occurring involving the um, pi star, involving the 
LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital in carbon monoxide, accepting a pair of electrons from the DXY or the T2G um, set of orbitals in the um, iron atom. So that's a really interesting, really unique um, situation. In fact, this, this concept of pi, pi back bonding is very important in a lot of your organometallic um, coordination chemistry, but carbon monoxide just happens to be a specific example that has really interesting clinical um, consequences associated with it. And I figured, what the heck, it'd be a really cool thing to talk about um, as we move into our holiday season. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.